Greetings all, BWS2K here. Um, I struggled for a while with how to make this video. And in the end, I decided I would write what I wanted to say ahead of time. And so this will be one of those instances where what I'm doing is actually more or less scripted. It'll be obvious when I'm reading probably and, and when I am a little bit more spurious. Um, but a lot of folks are making critiques and reviews and analyses of the new Masters of the Universe Revelation series over on Netflix. And I liked it. Uh, I watched it. Um, but there were a lot of things that I felt um, I might have gone a different direction in. So rather than making a video where I say the awful things that I thought were awful, or the amazing things that I thought were amazing, which, um, spoiler alert, it's not in my script, but I loved the music and a lot of the backdrops, like the matte paintings, well, they're probably not matte paintings anymore, I don't know what process they use now, but just the set pieces were, oh, it was gorgeous. I really, really enjoyed those. Um, but I wanted to make a video that was more along the lines of what I would have done with that story, sort of like an alternate, a BW's alternate universe um, what if scenario, right? We have the Marvel what if comics. This is sort of a Masters of the Universe what if. And I'm aware that there are comics that were supposed to have come out earlier in the summer that relate somehow, and I know that there are more episodes on the way, and I know that this is riding on the coattails of a franchise that has been, um, there's been many incarnations over the years. I am trying to consider this piece, this five episode series or mini series, pre miniseries, whatever, I know it's the first half, um, on its own, with in good faith and not really uh, connected to the other things. Even though I know there's those connections, um, it made more sense to me that I could work with what we were seeing and just what we were seeing. Okay, so um, enough of me stumbling through my words. We're going to get to the script, but I, I wanted to say that right off the bat, this is not going to be BW complaining about the show, and it's not going to be complaining about the people. I don't really even know enough to compare it to the lore or anything like that. Um, but overall, I still enjoyed the show. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be doing this. You'll notice that you know, you've never seen me do a gameplay video of, like, Monopoly, because I don't like Monopoly. I'm sure you could play it alone. I'm sure you could make YouTube videos of it. Somebody probably does, but I won't be one of those people because I just don't care about that. Um, I cared about what I saw, and I care about the, the franchise in general um, and the nostalgic piece and everything. So I made a video. These are my thoughts and my observations, but also more like uh, an alternate direction that I would have gone that I would have personally enjoyed, and maybe I'm the only one who would have enjoyed it. Um, so let's get to that. Fancy transition. All right, here we go. It can be hard to talk about Netflix's Masters of the Universe revelation. The word divisive comes to mind. Also, overreaction. I watched the first five episodes a second time, and I took a total of 12 pages of notes with the aim of really trying to understand what I liked, what I didn't like, why, why certain choices were made. I've kept myself from any reviews. I think I read an article back when the trailer hit, and that's about it. Um, but you can't dodge YouTube thumbnail forever. Thumbnails forever. Clearly, we've covered that I live at an intersection before. Clearly, there are some very angry folks out there regarding this show. I'm not one of them, and this is not one of those videos, but it does contain spoilers, so fair warning. What I'd like to do instead, because it's a little closer to my wheelhouse and runs parallel to my usual RPG-based fare, with a subtle plug for the Legends of Grey School book, uh, Grey, Grey School, Legends of Grey Skull book coming out eventually for Cortex Prime, uh, probably next year, I think, is what the, the trailer on the Let's Play uh, had. I think it didn't say 2022. Um, so what I'd like to do is offer up what I wish would have happened instead with these characters. Not every scene needs to be changed, in my opinion, but there were some decisions that just left me feeling disappointed, but not because of my expectation as much as what the script seemed to me to be pointing towards anyway, maybe. I'm not sure. But I think you're going to see what I mean. I hope so anyway, so let's begin. 
also using fancy transition things on OBS. So let's see how that goes. All right. In episode one, when He-Man is fighting to use the sword like a conduit to contain the blast, we hear the following lines of dialogue. Tila, the power of that much magical energy will kill anybody, even you. You'll die if you do this, He-Man. He-Man, if I don't do this, everybody dies. Now the writers are clearly angling to make Tila the star of whatever's coming up. It's obvious even from the first dialogue of the episode. Nothing wrong with that. What happens is ultimately, in a flashy show of magic explosions, He-Man is killed and Skeletor is functionally destroyed. But since we're already heading in a different direction, I would like to have seen Tila help He-Man carry the burden. Battle Cat 2 and Orko and Duncan, the whole team, sure, bring everyone in here, but at least Tila and He-Man together. Lean into a we have the power theme. Together we are greater than the sum of our parts. And that magic explosion still has consequences, like revealing Adam and Cringer's true identities. So we can still have the issue with the sword being split and sent to different realms, and Tila can still feel betrayed. There's more, but I want to fast forward to another bit of dialogue and then start to tie things together. Later in the episode, in the palace, we hear, Tila, no, I'm done with every one of you. And she turns to Marlena, you knew, didn't you? And you never said anything, not even to him. Everybody I ever trusted since I was a child knew Adam was He-Man. I have laid my life on the line for every one of you, but you're all a pack of liars, and Adam was no different. Duncan, Tila, that's enough. Tila, yes, it is, because I've had enough. Enough of your secrets and lies, enough of magic and the monsters it makes, enough of the royal palace, and enough of Castle Grayskull to last me a lifetime. I'm done looking out for the people who never told me the truth. He-Man is gone, Skeletor is gone, and now, so am I. Orko. Wait, Tila, don't go! Or excuse me, wait, don't go, Tila. We can get through this together, like we always do. Gotta make sure we cite our sources properly, right? Now we all come at this experience from different places. But this is by all counts a very traumatic reveal for Tila. It's a lot to learn, and it's a lot to take that you've been lied to by those you love and trust. The writing makes it abundantly clear, and it's a really well-written scene. What I would have done differently is a pretty simple change. Chase her. They're all grieving, I know, but they need each other now more than ever, and there's no reason to doubt the sincerity of their love for Tila, so why didn't anyone go after her? Why didn't someone try to catch up with her and explain or ask forgiveness or just listen? And don't dismiss Orko's words because they're consistent with the changes I'm offering to the conduit scene earlier. They can get through this together and they could have gotten through that situation together as well. Next episode. We fast forward a few years and magic is all but gone, justifying Andra's presence on the team, right? She's a techie. She'd fit right in with the crew, for sure. The team has been scouring Eternal Eternia for magical artifacts and trying to locate the halves of the power sword. So we've, we've got more than just Tila and Andra working together. We've got the whole crew, but they're still looking for artifacts. The magic is still gone. We're still on, on um, point here, on theme kind of for what we're going for. It's just a little more cohesive, in my opinion, and we've got everyone together. All right. The big bad can and should absolutely still be Triclops's cult because it's a perfect foe for them to battle. Evil Lin and Beast Man can absolutely be on the team as well, since the team will appreciate the extra muscle and talent. When Skeletor is gone, and Triclops has taken over their old haunt, 
And we already know that Sorceress was willing to work with Lynn because of a shared interest. All of that can still happen. But we've picked a theme of the we have the power and family and we stuck with it. Adam has to struggle with not being He-Man. Cringer can't be Battle Cat. Duncan still gets to watch his daughter, now a man-at-arms, grow into her own person as team leader. That's certainly bittersweet with dramatic potential. Orko and Lynn can still have that amazing interplay because it was beautiful and we should see more of it more often. Oh, chef's kiss when they were having like the illusion thing. Roboto would fit in right as, excuse me, Roboto would fit in as well as surrogate family member and secondary techie or tertiary if you count Duncan. And he's also a nice glimpse into the past as he's modeled after a Duncan in a time that doesn't exist anymore. He's a good surrogate for the innocence and naivete that seems to have been lost. Okay. Deep breath. This is where I have to pause and acknowledge the elephant in the room and get into some tricky stuff. If I can just shove my own privilege and my own naivete aside, for a moment to do so. Related to that, a secondary elephant. I suspect that there was also supposed to be a sort of self-discovery theme and a this is who I really am message. But I respectfully suggest that it was kind of botched. When we pick up in episode two, Tila is kind of a jerk. She makes Andra dig through garbage in their first scene together and barely lets her take a crack at opening the technologically enhanced door in Snake Mountain. Wasn't Tila just calling her an engineer at that point? Wasn't Andra introduced as the brains to Tila's bronze? And it's frustrating because we see Tila reveal that she knows another way into Snake Mountain that she hadn't mentioned before. So if we're supposed to believe that she's been traumatized by secrets and lies from those she trusts, does she not see that she is now basically He-Man for Hire, complete with a sidekick who, unlike He-Man, she's constantly one-upping and flexing over? If this is really who she is, it's not that great. Now maybe it'll get better in the future episodes. So, let her get a haircut and redefine her image, and let's all learn that Tila had a secret all along too, maybe one that she couldn't even articulate until now. I'm not saying that I hated what they did. I didn't. I just think a lot of the choices that they made could have been different and more internally consistent with what we're watching, and the story could have still been preserved or even strengthened. Of course, that's if what the concern was in the first place was quality stories and strong writing, which I'm writing all of this in good faith that it was. Okay, moving forward, imagine the story beats pretty much the same, except that Adam is with the team and facing old foes, not as a big hulking mass of magic and muscle, but as a loyal and competent sidekick. Maybe something like a rogue role, be maybe getting all sneaky because every tropey team needs one of those and kind of the expert, maybe he is, uh, excuse me, maybe he's the kind of expert on various artifacts and locations and villains because he remembers them firsthand. What would it be like for him to have to face the reality of what it must have been like for Tila to have put so much trust in someone else, knowing that he himself ultimately betrayed that trust? Let's hit that beat early on so that we can all, especially Adam, start to fully appreciate Tila's reaction in the throne room. I think we'd leave it a mystery to the general public that Adam was He-Man too, and let the villains wax eloquent about their defeated foe right in front of Adam. There's lots of pun potential and witty but harmless double entendres and interplay there. So the team knows, because they saw Adam transform, or already knew ahead of time, uh, Andra can know, or maybe she doesn't. Maybe that's kind of a, a cool little dynamic, but I think if we're leaning into the tr again, trusting each other and things, 
I think she would know. But as for like the general populace and the general villains, not so much. There's another really powerful theme that I feel like Netflix kind of waffled on. The notion of magic versus machine. The progress of technology. It's why I think Triclops is the perfect foe for this new party. And Adam being powerless, or less powerful I guess, to prevent ordinary Eternians from being converted, or even watching them choose to be infected with the Technovirus, that's heavy. He's a prince, after all, and when excuse me, when rulers walk the streets, they often have to face the harsh realities and far-reaching consequences of their rule. Marlena and Randor would definitely still be on the throne, and Adam may find that some of their policies don't go exactly as planned. Again, it's another really great personal journey that Adam could go on as part of the team rather than what he got. Can you picture the sequences in Subterranea now? Subternia, excuse me, Subternia now. It bothers me that Tila basically doesn't give up anything in her bargain with Scareglow. And now she can. Her fear, we are kind of told, is that she doesn't want to embrace her fate, but also she owns her fear. Well, guess what? She's going to stand in it now. And it's not going to be the fate to be the next sorceress, which, in my opinion, simply isn't hinted at nearly as much as her becoming the next champion anyway. That's not her fate, and that's not her fear. It's to lead the new team. Rather than a, I don't want this to happen sort of angle, it becomes a, I'm afraid I'm going to lead them all to ruin. A subtle, but a significant change. And like it or not, He-Man's boots are awfully big ones to fill. And this is a role that she's not used to. And that's a very scary thing in its own right. But it dovetails perfectly with her becoming a man-at-arms. It's leadership, responsibility, so she battles Scareglow, Scare Glow, and he's weakened, and the illusion drops, and the teams come together and defeat him as well, with everyone playing their different roles. Have Andra make a ghost trap, like from Ghostbusters, you know what I'm talking about? Have Andra make a ghost trap, while Orko and Lynn combine forces and throw Scare Glow into it. Maybe Adam and Roboto and Duncan can all help too, or maybe they can keep some minions at bay. Turns out that Tila's fears were the real illusion. She's doing great. Way to lead. Get the sword. Hop over to Paternia. Forge the sword. And if you want drama, don't have Roboto explode. Have his essence, which we know is real now because he's people now, because he's finally feeling emotions, so he's more than just a machine, have that essence fuse into the power sword. It sets us, sets us up for the reveal that Skeletor's essence was able to hide in Lin's staff, anyway. So echoing there, or foreshadowing. And it doesn't feel like such a wasted self-sacrifice. And it echoes back to the magic versus machine piece a little bit. Now, it doesn't mean that the sword becomes sentient, necessarily. Only that Roboto can be resurrected in the future somehow. Maybe, or probably in some epic battle with Triclops, where Andra has to super hack into a magical technological artifact or something. I don't know. The point is, we don't have to explode Roboto. Anyway, in the final episode, as Adam says those magic words, he still gets stabbed. All along, in our series, instead of the I go where you go mantra, we've been using the we have the power theme. So it makes sense. He's saying the old mantra when he lifts up the sword. And that's not what we're about anymore. So he gets stabbed. Lynn and Beastman, though, they don't switch sides, having learned to be truly appreciated as a part of the team. Skeletor, then, is left on his own to ascend to Jafar-like power, and we're left with a doozy of a cliffhanger. Can the team tackle this new improved Skeletor under Tila's leadership? My, my single notes for this picture, by the way. They were literally, okay, Jafar. Can they do it? Of course they can. 
So we'll pick up in episode six and learn that Moss Man was restored as well. When all those plants come back to life in the orb room, or maybe it's not the Moss Man that we know, but a new character altogether. Whoever they are, they help heal Adam with some secret herbs and spices. Skeletor is now waging a war against Triclops' forces, which makes sense because Triclops was getting religious and part of Skeletor's final words were literally, look at my face, child. It has furnished for me a lonely life in which none would have me as a man. So then let me be a god. Eternia is even more of a mess with our heroes smack in the middle. Randor and Marlena can play an even more prominent role now, and we can bring in all kinds of allies to restore peace back to the land for as many seasons as Netflix will pay for. That doesn't sound exciting enough. Let's not throw away this absolute gem. Oops. The sea never forgets Evolin, and neither do I. Okay. Well, I did it again. I did that entire segment with my headphones on and I'm leaving it in because we embrace imperfection around here and it keeps me humble. And um, I think that's really important. <laughs> I think that's really important for me uh, to remember that I am not a YouTube expert uh, or video creator, content creator expert. Anyway. So um, I hope the video was okay. Uh, if you have thoughts, comments, questions, observations, definitely leave them in the description if there's anything that I messed up. Although again, it's not a gameplay video, so I don't think I messed anything up. Uh, I will correct it in the description below. Um, other than that, uh, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, I don't think I have anything to plug. So we're good here. Excelsior. <laughs>